Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling Media. Nike Hot Seat special guest. He makes his return today on the, uh, well, right after the announcement that he would be joining the 2016 Hall of Fame with the Kansas Wrestling Coaches Association. Our buddy David Ray joins us. David, how are you? Good. Thank you, Scott. It's good to see you, my friend. And congratulations on becoming a 2016 Hall of Fame inductee. I got the word from uh, Pat Kelly of the uh, KWCA, and he's so excited about this. And we're excited as well. I mean, you've absolutely had a tremendous impact on this sport over the years. We're going to be going through your bio a little bit. But uh, who, who called to tell you that uh, you, you were getting the honor? It was uh, Pat Kelly. It was Pat. Okay. Yes. Well, let's, 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 let's take you back to where you, you started and why. I mean, Kansas obviously is, is, is part of your very heartbeat. That's where it all started in sixth grade in 1975. Take us from 75 through graduation. Um, well, it was quick, <laughs> but uh, I just started, my older brothers wrestled, and we moved to Springfield, Missouri for a couple of years, but I never got involved until we came back to Goddard in my sixth grade year. Uh, Missouri back then was um, behind, really. They, they've gone a lot, come a long ways, but... Anyway, we went back to Goddard, and they started a wrestling club when I was sixth grade, so I went out, and my first year, I was pretty successful. I won the kids' nationals, which was like freestyle, but it was like seven states. I remember it was us, Missouri, Minnesota, and I forgot all the other states, but those were the better ones, and, and I won it, did very well, and I was pretty surprised with myself, but... Um, <laughs> then I went to seventh grade, and, and I went up to the older le age level, 13 and 14, and I took second at the Kids Nationals. And then uh, in eighth grade, my last year in the Kids Nationals, I, uh, or the Kids Wrestling, I um, lost to the kid that, Han, who was a freshman in high school already, and in, and he ended up winning it, but I lost to him 5-5 five, five career tier, so I but I ended up finishing fourth that year. Then I went to high school, and um, I, uh, my first freshman year, I had one loss at the semifinals at state, and came back and took third. And then I won it the next three years, but um, I also went to Goddard and Bishop Carroll. The Bishop Carroll I went to because he was the high school coach my brothers had. He called me up and said, "Hey, would you want to come over here?" And I said, "Oh, sure." But then he left, and I went back to Goddard where I originally started high school and where most of my friends, I have friends of both, but that's where I wanted to go back to. So, and I, and I like that transition because you did it for obvious reasons. By the way, Tony Hager is going to love the fact that you're 105 pounds in ninth grade. You go back to Tony's career, 105 pounds is my partner, Tony Hager. And uh, you look at what he did, man, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's kind of a mirror here, you know, of your your senior year, I think. Uh, were you at 126 your senior year or your junior year? You're 138 your senior year. 126 my junior year. Okay, 26 junior, 138 your senior year. And... Uh, it, but so I interrupt that Tony Hager I was talking about. He's 74 years old today. Yeah, different Tony yeah, Hager. Tony Hager, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My Tony Hager's he, nowhere near Tony. Or, yours uh, starts, he spells <laughs> his name E-R at the end and mine A-R. Isn't that wild? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so from there, this is where it starts to really get interesting. This is why you had such an impact. First of all, high school folk style record within Kansas, 118 and 188 falls dominant in falls overall high school folk style record including the perry oklahoma tournament 123 and three in the sophomore in the in the summer between sophomore and junior year you had over 70 matches i mean yes i am um, all freestyle because it well kansas back in the 70s was I tell you, they had a tournament, two tournaments every weekend after. I'd always start off at our high school season with the Ponca City tournament. It was the first weekend of sure. March. And I'd go to Ponca City, wrestle in that one. And then there would be a few others in Oklahoma that I would probably get involved. But Kansas, starting in April, would have um, two tournaments somewhere in the state every weekend, two freestyle tournaments. And so I'd pick one and with some friends, and we'd get matches in and all the way through until we get to Fargo. That's crazy. I mean, you, you know, when 
You began your collegiate career as a wrestler, um, in wrestling, I should say, for the University of Iowa. And back then, it was, it was um, a little different because you couldn't turn around without bumping into an All-American, an NCAA champ, an Olympian, a world medalist. I mean, it was thick, uh, 80 through 85, 80 through 89, really. Uh, back when you and I were there at Iowa, it was, you, I mean, you got there a year after I did. You got there in 81. But um, talk about your years at Iowa early, your first go round. Well, early I came in that room and it was it was really tough. <laughs> I remember Randy Lewis, Barry Davis, Mark Trezino, and Kerber, and you went. There was Kevin Brown, Bob Kaufman, and there was Kevin Dresser, and we could go on. There was, you know, um, a lot of them, even Kurt Ranshaw. You, I can name a lot more, and you're probably thinking, "Oh God, all these names and that ring bells." But so it, every practice was very competitive. And it was, it was, but it made it fun. And it was, I, you, you improved so much just because of the level you were practicing with. And my first year, Kerber had a few injuries. So they had, they used me in matches my first year. And I had to wrestle against Cal Pauling, Cal um, Bakersfield. And I still remember my first match against Baker. Uh, Kerber wrestled against Arizona State. After that dual meet, he came up to me, Jeff Kerber, and goes, David, how's your weight? And I said, oh, no, about 11 and 12 over. And he <laughs> goes, well, we're, um, you better get it down. I goes, I don't, I'm not going to wrestle any more of the duels. And he just told me that. And so then later he told the coach, I got my weight down. Well, that first night we wrestled Bakersfield the next day, and I was hurt. And you never complain. And I no. remember Gable coming up to me after the, um, the match that I lost 5-0 to the Bakersfield, and he sat next to me, and he goes, David, he goes, I don't think I've ever had a wrestler not score a point for me during a match. <laughs> and being a freshman, true freshman, I believed him, and I thought, man, I am, that's embarrassing. It's, it was like, I felt like it was, um, I felt like I let my coach down and everybody down, and that was the most um you know, probably embarrassing thing I've ever done in my life or, or letting anybody down was not even scoring a point. I was the only wrestler ever done that for him. <laughs> and so the next next night we wrestled Cal Poly. Before I went out to wrestle, I remember uh, Jay Robinson Gable coming up to me saying, uh, his name was Barfus, and he go, they go, he's a freshman. He's about 500, his record. So I went out there, and the first move, I got this arm throw, and, and I hit it, but... He did. I didn't score off it, but he did like a cartwheel. He went flying, um, hit one shoulder across his head, across the other shoulders. And I remember looking over the side, and Lou Bannick, Ed Bannick, and Jim Zaleski all run up to the edge of the mat, and they're flexing, going, screaming, yeah, all into it. And I looked at them, and boy, that energy just gave, I mean, it gave me a lot of energy and, and focus right then because they were all excited. And if you remember those guys, they were very muscular, and they just – so I went back there. I went in a match, I think, 9-5, 9-6. And at, they never said anything. At the end of the year, I was looking at the um, All-Americans, and Kerber was um, sixth that year. And the kid that was seventh was Barfus from Cal Poly. He was a senior. And the guy that I lost to the night before, he already beat three times that year. It totaled like five times that year. But I realized kind of as a freshman that um, there's a lot of middle games right then at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's where, all right, so you impressed me when at, at Iowa, okay, and, and I got to see firsthand not only your practice regimen but your competition. You went 80 and 20 uh, overall collegiate career. You finished up at Edinburgh. A lot of people may have forgotten that, but you, you went 37 and 7 there in your final season there. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's so much – uh, history between those programs, Iowa, Edinburgh, et cetera. But what what really got my attention was your ability to compete successfully in freestyle and Greco. Okay, a lot of people go, oh, you got to pick one or the other. I don't think that. I believe that you can do both and do both well because I think one strengthens the other. Do you do you happen to agree with that? I agree with you there. I I like I was more successful in Greco, but I I like freestyle. Um, more. 
I love. Here's what I like about Greco: uh, free flying lessons. Okay, if if, if, the, if the guy does it well <laughs> and launches you well, I mean, it's one of the thing of beauty. You know, it's a, it's a, it's perhaps one of the great parts for of Greco for me, is. Uh, is the action between the two guys in a Greco match. I just love it. I can't wait if they do, in fact, install two weight classes for women in the Olympics uh, in Greco. I think we could see just a huge explosion. All right, so, Coach, Coach Ray, David yes. Ray, you're getting inducted by a, a jury, as it were, of your peers into the Kansas uh, Association. And I think it's, it's for the many years of competition as much as it is the many years of of uh, of coaching from S southern illinois at edwardsville to to montana state university uh i mean let's face it you've had a touch on almost every level at some in some degree uh and it's uh, your constant exploration of the sport you've always improved it um well i appreciate that i I just think uh, I've been fortunate to have different levels. Like you said, Division three, II, two, and one, and NEI. The only level I have not coached at was the junior college in JCA, but I did recruit from there a lot. And they, uh, it uh, has been exciting. It's been, I've been fortunate. I, uh, I always tell everybody my 12 years at Montana State Northern of, of coaching career were probably the, the, mo the best or the, the best years of my career in my life so far because of the, um, the, the, the individuals I recruited and the success we had. It was, it was a lot of fun. Now, we're talking with Coach David Ray. He and his wife have been literally around the country in, in what some would say to be some pretty drastic moves. I remember when you moved to Alaska. Uh, you're now out in Great Falls, Montana. Uh, you've lived in Des Moines, Iowa. You've lived in Indianola. You've lived uh, in Illinois, uh, Kansas, uh, Edinburgh, out in Pennsylvania. I mean, it's just constant. So i got to bring up some guys, though, before we're out of time. I and I say their name. You tell me first thing that comes to mind, okay? Here we go. Emmett Wilson. <laughs> the Hodge winner? The I Hodge. think I would say he, um, I tell you, he's just mentally so tough. I was he mentally tough. Mm. Turk Lords. There is no. He is so very very strong. The wrong, strongest wrestler I've ever um, coached. Mm. I think that I think that's an interesting observation because I think there's I don't think there's anybody out there that would disagree with you, and I'm not sure why. You know, he had that Danny Hodge type strength that that. Uh, you know, you look at Danny Hodgkin, probably not going to hurt when he shakes your hand, but you know what? It really hurts your hand. <laughs> and they're both in ranching right now, too. They they both do some other business, but they're both being ranchers, and that's what they love, and that's what they want to be. Coach, you've been a tournament director, coordinator of the NEIA National Championships when held in Great Falls, uh, president of the NEIA National Wrestling Coaches Association, uh, I mean, it's it's been an incredible career, one that should be recognized. Uh, you've continued your education at many institutions like Iowa, Simpson, Edinburgh, et cetera. But uh, you've got the endorsement of so many of your friends. I got to believe. Do your kids know what you do? Do Catherine oh. and Taylor, Alexis, Michelle, Brooklyn, and even your granddaughter? Do they have any idea what kind of impact you've had on this sport? Um. <laughs> yeah, they do, but we don't talk about it. Right. Uh, in fact, my sister-in-law, who's my wife's um, sister, she was saying something the other day to my wife, says, your kids act like it's no big deal. And it's because it isn't any big deal. How can you make a big thing of something about helping people or working with people? And there's been many times that I've made mistakes, and there's times that we've made the right decisions or poor decisions. There's nothing to to boast about there you just you're always trying to help and and the other thing is being success it's something we're always learning in our house that it's not it's nothing you let it go to your head because there's always other people out there always better it's, or been more successful it's, so never, how can it's you, never easy right right and but they um so we really i mean i'm the kind of person i don't talk about it i we just um Take each day and move forward and try to enjoy it. David, 
it's our pleasure to congratu congratulate you. Of course, the special uh, special day will be October 8th in Salina, Kansas. That's when you, sir, will become uh, part uh, of the history of the Hall of Fame as you're inducted into the Kansas Wrestling Coaches Association as the 2016 Hall will take place. And I think uh, the inductions will take place, I should say. And I want to thank uh, our buddy Pat Kelly for keeping me in the loop on this. I don't know that there's anybody in this sport that, uh, that I would like to salute any more than I would you. And here I am today getting that opportunity. And I thank you for that opportunity. Well, thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. And I love the sport. I enjoyed meeting and everyone that's been, in, I've been in contact throughout the years in the sport. It's been a pleasure. David Thank Ray's you. been our guest. He's only 40 years old. If you're looking for a new head coach, <laughs> uh, this is your guy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, let's face it. Are you it. pulling a Bruce Bumgarner here? I, <laughs> I just <laughs> talked with Bruce yesterday, and you never know. I mean, uh, Bruce is the new president of USA Wrestling, and uh, he, he, he reclaims that spot from Jim Ravenack. I mean, yeah, there's a whole lot of Edinburgh out there. There's a whole lot of Iowa out there, but uh, you've done a great job of making Kansas a favorite place for wrestling as well. David, thanks for the time, man. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you for calling. David Ray has been our guest on the Nike Hot Seat today for Takedown Wrestling Media. I'm Scott Casper reporting. Thank you.